Hey guys, my name is James. I'm Nicole. And this is Mostly Mostly Speaking Sentai. Uh? No, it's friggin' not. You can tell by the episode title that we're giving you from patreon.com forward slash MLM pod episode 14 of Engaged Engaged with with Nicolas Cage. Cage. This one we're discussing the movie Honeymoon in Vegas, or is it Honeymoon in Las Vegas? Vegas. Okay. It's a beautiful Nick Cage movie, one of our favorites, I think. I I think I wanted to put sure. it all the way at the top. But then you said, no, 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 no. And then you friggin' punched my opinion in the yeah. kidney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Submit to me, bro. The reason why we're doing this is we're apartment hunting, and I got my second COVID shot vaccine and I, I'm just feeling groggy this week. I'm much better than I was yesterday, but I need some time to relax. But You're I, busy, bro. I mean, this is technically my job. Give us a job. break. But I need a day off because I'm feeling ill and not in the communication or license two way. Uh, Enjoy. Yeah, I guess that. (laughs) If you would like to listen to this and all the other shows, such as talking about Beyblade, the Toku Reading Corner, and the podcast that be, also some watch-alongs of things like Casper, Meet the Deedles, Inspector Inspector Gadget, Gadget, and Frighteners, go over to patreon.com forward slash MLM pod and sign up today. It's $5 and you can listen on your podcast app. You get an RSS feed link that you punch in there and you're good to go. And then if you do the $10, you get shout outs such as, well, actually, we need to do that because I don't think we shout the, these people out. So let me quickly run down yeah. our $10 patrons before we get into this episode of en- Engaged with Nicholas Cage. Cage. It doesn't matter if we both do it. Steve F., Eric Berry of Ranger Command Power Hour, Alex Z, a.k.a. The Waz, Defoe, his name is Orion, and oh my god, will he be on the show next week? Probably, unless something serious happens. Kayla, a.k.a. Two Grapes, Duo Grun Fox, that's Two Fox for the price of Grun, Tyler Wright, Elliot W at Garlic Sunshine on Instagram and Jordan B, the Chaos Witch. And give a shout out to a new patron. They're five dollar, but they're new. Yemma Cries, which I think is our friend JC. So Joe. thank you guys for uh, listening to this intro. But without further ado, episode 14 of the beautiful patreon.com forward slash MLM pod podcast. Engage with Nicholas Cage. And action. Hey guys, what's up today? We watched Honeymoon in Vegas. Release date August 28th, 1992, starring James Khan. Not can, not just can, but long. <laughs> Sarah Jessica Parker, and yeah, boy, Nicolas Cage. That the same opening weekend as Pet Cemetery 2 and Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me. Opening weekend made $7.3 million. The gross domestic was $35 million, and the budget was about $25 million. So they probably, probably just about broke even considering other expenses it has is that right it, my notes say it has 35 percent score on rotten tomatoes but i feel like i saw on the thing we rented that it was higher than that can i, I double know. check it is yeah go okay? for it oh because it shows whatever the fucking tom tomato tomatomer the review, the critics? Is, yeah, higher. That's what I saw. But I do audience score, which was 35%. Speaking of reviews, Jose gives three stars. The only reason this movie came to my attention was because it and other movie were included when I ordered a Papa John's pizza. <laughs> I forgot about this. <laughs> it's a decent movie. Not bad, but not good. Not a Cage fan, but it came with the pizza. I 
think they're talking about a free trial for a streaming service promotion in 2010 is what I found. Well, wait, but it came with a pizza. Yeah. Also, there wouldn't was there streaming services in 2010? Yes. Oh, wait, okay, this is all... Yeah, absolutely. There was Netflix in 2010. But was Netflix streaming then? I thought that was more like 2011, 2012. I don't fucking know the history of Netflix. Okay, because that's that's around when I first heard about it, and it's like, yeah, we gotta do this. Okay, well, I looked this up, Okay. and this is the promo. Stop trying to mansplain wait, to me But I was thinking. Fucking thing that i researched uh, there bitch. were times back in the 90s where if you ordered like hey get this type of pizza and we will like give you a movie why can't it just be that and how what does the what does papa john's and a streaming service have to do because you get pizza and then you watch a movie oh That's that makes what sense people do okay now it's now it's all coming together you should have explained that I'm the what? audience, you know? I should have explained why they had a movie with a pizza. Uh, no, to explain how a streaming service that is related to... explaining it. Because I was thinking, oh, this is on VHS and like, hey, you ordered this special pizza. It's attached to the pizza box is the VHS. That's a thing that happened. I feel like that's something that would happen and did happen. But I, maybe for more like kids videos and not... Uh, because I know like in, in not a DVD, a VHS. Uh, yeah, like a VHS. Yeah, I yeah. thought like it came like, oh, one night you could get like this for this week and it like was either, hey, you got this movie and it's like it came with that promotionally. Yeah, guys, so uh <laughs> never mind. Put an asterisk Asked. and say, Hey, my fat my fact. The thing that I looked up is wrong, uh -huh. and the thing that James is guessing happened y okay, is okay. correct. Oh, well, I'm so sorry that your fact, as you say, your alternative fact, I should say, is it was for maybe a streaming service. That's What was the streaming service? I, I was some fucking thing I've never heard of. Okay, why some wasn't bullshit. that in the notes, huh? Because I didn't think it was important. I didn't think we'd have a fucking <laughs> argument about whether or not they gave people, whether or not it's a more realistic that they gave someone a flyer for a free trial or a fucking VHS copy of this movie. Craig and Steve will come in and say like, oh my God, no, in Happy Meals or not. It seems more of like a Burger King kids meal, a big kids meal. BK, baby, have it your way. Oh. <sighs> They would why would be like, hey, yeah, um, Ninja Turtles. Okay, VHS but we're not talking we're about that. Burger King. We're talking about Domino's Pizza. Well, no, you said Papa John. Papa John's oh, Pizza. Oh, so okay. I bet you. Sorry, I'm thinking about Domino's because it is the best pizza. I bet a hundred dollars, guys. Fight me on Nicole that. Nicole had the date, the box office, and then just. Improv, improvise was yeah. written down on there like a talking about Beyblade script. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next review. <laughs> it's already off to a knees. All I'm right. neoed up again. I'm sorry. Right. Fucking fantastic. He's in. He's in it. He's in it. <gasps> Nicole. He, he's inspecting it. He's smelling. Smelling it. Are you smelling? Remember? Are you gelling commercials? Yeah, I do. Or maybe uh, they weren't real, you know? They came with a pizza. Uh, socks is in a cat bed that I washed. So that's that's the whole excitement of that. Customer gives three stars, saying, I was shocked and appalled by the amazingness of the neutrality in which I viewed this video. I could find nothing wrong or funny with it. It was completely and utterly even. I think that this in and of itself should deserve an award. Never have I seen such unbiased <laughs> representation of life. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, spoiler alert. James I, wrote this review. I, th no, I'm just I agree with this, but in a good way. Yeah, yeah. Except we'll get for into it. the one problematic character that was problematic. 
which I have a note about, so we'll talk about that. Uh, Everyone loves Christine in my Christine gives five stars. I could watch this movie back to back for days. What a wonderful movie. And you will not be sorry for buying it. Enjoyable. Plus, 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 and even more. Hell yeah. Honeymoon in Vegas is about a messed up love triangle between two fiancés, Betsy and Jack. And the fiancés are Betsy and Jack. And then the third person is a professional gambler, Tommy, who tricks them into losing 65 grand in order to make Betsy spend an entire weekend with him in exchange for erasing their debt so that he can convince her to fall in love with him because she looks like his dead wife. I hope that makes sense. It was actually kind of hard to uh, just put this the synopsis into like one sentence like I usually do because it's kind of a weird premise in an interview with Sirius XM Sarah Jessica Parker said that the producer she didn't say the producer's name but I looked it up because I was like we're gonna name this fuck the producer Mike Lobel sent a treadmill to Iowa where she was currently working Six months before filming to make sure she was fit. And at the time, she was 27 years old, but said that she was fine with it, making sure to run every morning. I personally have conflicting feelings about it, but she didn't seem to care. Uh, Like, I listened to the interview and she didn't seem to really give a shit. Nicholas Cage, on the other hand, while talking about going to a couple of screaming screenings, ah! said in an interview, it was a wonderful sound. I had made a movie that actually made people laugh. <laughs> My films are usually so introspective, except for Moonstruck. I've never had a movie that made people feel good. <laughs> Making him want to do more comedies in the future. The writer, after having... Oh, and then this is... I didn't know how to segue into this other part, so that's the end of Nicolas Cage. Um, The writer, after having heart surgery, wanted to make this movie into a musical. It took 10 years, but it was finally turned into a musical around 2015 with decent reviews. And with that... Let's start the pod. All right, how do you refill this? I don't have a prescription. Sir, please wait your turn. Uh, hey, buddy, ever heard of a lie? Hey, have you ever been dragged to the sidewalk and beaten to you? Hi guys, it's me, your host, Nicole Jakus. Oh, and it's me, the co-host, James McCullum. Oh, I know what I'm about to say. And we're engaged, engaged with, with Nicholas Cage. Because you know he's not married to that script. Nicole, let, I would like to quickly say something about Socks. He is in a he's very cute cat bed right now. On a Pillsbury Doughboy blanket, on a green chair. We've had this uh, cat bed for a while. Yeah. But it was stuffed in a hamper behind a hamper because Frank had gotten poop on it. Yeah. And now I mean, I'm just a tiny bit, but we were like, mm, this nah. needs to get washed yeah. anyway. And I'm kind of upset that you did wash it. Because we could have made duty clone out of it. <laughs> okay. And then Frank could have been with us again. Okay. He would have been all drippy because he's, you know, duty. Yeah. And, or pretty much like Clayface, but Frank's poop. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Yes. It would have been cute. Would have been cool. Would have been keen. Yeah. Uh, how are you? So I was just staring at how cute he was. Okay. How am I? Yep. Yeah. I'm uh, fine- Dandy even. 
I don't know. I just wanted to, I didn't want to really talk about the week and stuff because as always the, everything sucks and we're here to like distract people from everything that sucks to talk about Nicolas Cage. All right. So then I will bring up something. It's not for my week. It's just something I realized while listening to another podcast today. It's past 2020, so please be a buddy to your buddy, and we need to remove the stigma and start working forward, and, you know, like, people are like, oh, men need to stop being toxic, hug each other, but what we should also do is remove the stigma of autoerotic asphyxiation, and, like, People should like don't make it a solo effort like the other person should have the belt and be in control. So that's how people die and it becomes a suicide is they're doing it alone in a closet or strapped up to a doorknob. Be a buddy to your hubby included and just choke them with a belt slightly. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a lot less sad then. I feel like that's <laughs> yes. I feel like that's why it's such a like taboo or whatever yeah. is because it's just like sad. <laughs> yeah, and there is science there's a scientific reason why it feels good. Yeah. It's the same thing I believe why that with uh, what was it C- not Cialis um Cymbalta why Cymbalta while well, I was taking that it was like yeah I totally want to hear the story for the 80th time it like was l- pretty much making me autoerotic because oxygen wasn't getting to my head I was yawning constantly uh-huh. so guys help your friends out in a bind and bind them you're just your friends yeah friends associates your lovers co-workers yeah not at work be consensual about it of course learn also how to properly choke someone mm. it's on the sides not because you don't want to collapse mm. the windpipe yeah the front bottom sing about that oh really yeah oh i just see lil Corey and jc always posting mm. about it i'm like okay guys maybe we get that's it. why they like the front bottom so much <laughs> oh, yeah they do okay that that actually full circle with that full circle jerk uh, with that. he says like you choked me for real this time i'm fine it's fine i'm fine my eyes rolled back and i came with you hell yeah yeah but th- it- they don't explain like, hey, make sure you're not on the windpipe open, break my ribs right through. No, they don't like explain the proper way of doing it. Okay. It's just lyrics about... Choking. Uh, It improperly happening. Oh, okay, okay. Choke me, baby, one more time. But they still time. came, so... Oh. Yes! <laughs> oh, you can... St- I was about... I was- <laughs> You can still come when you're passed out, which is when you're dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wonder if you like the body would still science science. Please, when this is not like people are like, Just hey, the idea of science. Please contact us. Engage with Nicolas Cage. It's not James being a character or an exact. This is me for real. If science would like to, like, massage my, like, right after I die, mm-hmm. massage my prostate and see if, like, a reaction will happen. Is science what you call your dildo? No. <laughs> science is what I call your tongue. Because, <laughs> baby, me and it Bravo. have chemistry. Bravo. <laughs> I'm itchy. It's all that Mio <laughs> I've been drinking. What? No. <laughs> My veins are itchy from all this oh, Mio. No. I've told you that story of how... Uh, yes, a million times. Okay. What uh, what story? About how that kid would inject... Okay. Not Propel. Gatorade. Yes, Propel. Propel in was... In their veins. I, but we, everyone was doing... I mean, not doing... Drinking Propel at this time. And yeah. my, my... It did not taste good, but I, I feel like... It's water. At least with my experience, I was like, it's better than water. Yeah. <laughs> my family had it. I'm talking in pathway terms. 
And I feel like we stopped having it once we learned that story because that person is so we were like, is that triggering yeah. him? We don't know. Yeah. I think he also did code red in his veins. It tickles. <laughs> no. Because <laughs> of the carbonation. I know. <laughs> no, he couldn't have because that would kill yeah, you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that would. That would yeah. Because that's like plundering your veins, which is bad. Don't do that to someone. I don't know what that means. Uh, you just, it's an air. Like you, pl- if you were to just take an empty syringe, pull it back, then inject air, just plunge yeah, them. You would die. Yeah. That's why they always squeak, squeak. Yeah. And tip, 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 tip it. Tap it, I mean, not tip it. Tap the tip of it. Tap the tip of the toes and feet the. <laughs> what was that? You never, that's just like a, like a, like vocal warm up thing. I say red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. But it's leather. like, yeah. All right. It's like one of those things. Well, I think that was, was my week. That was all my notes. <laughs> all right. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, brother. Oh my God. He's so cute. I just want to <laughs> squeeze him. <laughs> oh, I had one more thing. If you talk with a lisp. Yeah. It'll help with the mix because you won't have to use a de-esser as much. So anyone trying to look into get into podcasting instead of s- that's harsh on the de-esser. But if you're just saying suckering, suck a test. Oh, my God. Maybe that's why that porky pig did that. Or no, Sylvester. They were like, hey, he, we're going to be using a lot of S's, but we don't want the de-esser working overtime mm-hmm. because this is when it was actually a analog technology sure analog that's Mm -hmm. duty yeah (laughs) (laughs) all right let's get into the movie i guess oh you're ready now i'm ready i'm ready for what to get into the movie now just checking just chapping honeymoon in a vegas do we do like initial thoughts if we feel like it all right but I feel Do like you feel like it or not feel like it. A de-esser, like th- talking with a lisp, oh is God. more work on the pop filter. You can just say I'm from a spot. Oh, all right. Uh, initial thoughts. What'd you think? Oh, oh, okay. I guess we are doing this. Mm, I don't want to do it till the end. So okay, all right. You can if you want. And I I'll liked just, it, and I'll just like go off what you say. I thought this was leaving Las Vegas. We were doing, but that's not until a few episodes from now. Yeah, and if you remember the episode previous to this, when I say the next movie is Honeymoon in Vegas, not leaving Las Vegas. You, oh, you said that specifically? Yes. Oh, wow. I must not have been listening. Wow. Maybe I was meowed Shocker. up. Shocker. Okay. Shocker, baby. God damn, I knew it. Shockmaster. <laughs> what? I'm t- tipping over uh, boards in the wall. I'm breaking through and then tripping over it. I'm so confused. It was that wrestler who was in a stormtrooper head that was all bedazzled oh, and glittery. Okay, got it. <laughs> he just tips right over well it's like how can you even copyright oh that was wrestling back then baby all right they were like ask permission later true do now permission later the movie (gasps) the fucking movie that we watched it was good socks is giving me the evil eye for doing that it's fine forget about Um, him be in the moment he's so cute his little paw sticking out and his ears are like to the side because he's mad at me he's truly a wormhole he's giving me the evil eye and it's so cute he's sucking you in and your space time continuum is being stretched out to his direction uh movie opens to New York Hospital, 1987. 1987. Rock and roll. Um, Nicolas Cage is there to see his mom, who says to him, promise that you'll always love me and never get married. And he's like, uh, I can't do that. 
Um, and then she's like, you'll never find a woman that'll love you as much as me. Which sons don't want. If you're a son who's like, oh, you're not like my mom, go to therapy. That's gross. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty creepy, but I feel like it's common enough that it's like brought up in Ugh. media. I-, I think just a lot. Hollywood writers want to shimmy up with their mothers and that's why they're just watching too much 70s porn <laughs> well, i don't even 70s porn wasn't tabooed like it is now in the sense of like oh stepbrother stepmother mm-hmm. which is so bizarre yeah why i think i know why like one video went super viral and got popular and then the porn industry was like every video needs to be like this and now it's just the best actors and actresses are in these videos so people watch them because they are it's high quality love making on film Mm -hmm. so it's just like fast forward through the story and then yeah gets to the loving Mm -hmm. But yes, moms are gross, sons are gross, especially if they like each other's company. (laughs) Yeah, it would be like if if you liked that your mom is like, oh, my baby James. Uh, Get out of here, mom. (laughs) Six feet at all times, mother. I'm sticking with that. Oh, my God. So she says that and then and then she dies <laughs> in such a funny way. It's her just she's eyes wide open <laughs> of just talking and then like stiff. It, it's like the picture of Nicolas Cage that we took for our cover that yeah. you did. That's what she looks like from Vampire's Kiss. It's bizarre. Uh, yeah, it's pretty funny. Very um, funny. I mean, for anyone that doesn't know, like this is a rom-com. Uh-huh. So. Yeah. And right off the bat, it's calm. Right off the bat. And then it's Rom. And then it's the opening credits. There's like a cute cartoon, car, cartoon, cartoon. cartoon thing. Which it felt like the Zoloft commercial animation or Dude, Muzzy. yes. Do you, do you know what Muzzy is? No. He's that like green furred monster who would teach you Spanish maybe? Okay. And... I remember coming back from a a camping trip with like Michelle and Adam Sample and gang and we start I I thought it was Fozzie. I was like, yeah, you know those Fozzie commercials and then we were like it's not they were like it's not Fozzie. That's the bear in the band. I was like, isn't it? But it's Muzzy. Yeah. And for some weird I think the infomercials for Muzzy I think were just Muzzy cartoons. Uh-huh. And at the end they'd be like, you want to see more? Give us a call. Yeah. And order these many volumes of Muzzy. If you guys have VHS copies of Muzzy, it hit up our P.O. box. Why? Send them. I don't know. Be fun to own. Okay. Uh, my parents weren't l- wanting me to learn another language. They just wanted me to learn how to not be angry at people. Yeah. That was their main concern. Then I smoked a little weed. I was fine. Yeah. And then they were like, please, uh... Don't be as bad as your siblings. Yeah. I think I followed that up until five years ago. Okay. I moved away from the nest and I don't talk to them anymore. So I was a bad influence. Hell yeah, dude. Okay. Yeah. They're like that Nicole. If she weren't such such an adorable sprout, we would friggin hate her. I'm kidding. Your mom loves me. I know. Okay. So. Which is gross. uh, Oh. Yeah, because she's a mom. Oh. And she's like, oh, you're a bride to never be. You'll never love my son as God much as me. I would marry it. my little boy if he wanted. Yeah, maybe that's why she's fine <laughs> with it. Ew, gross. <laughs> I say, um, moms, friggin' hit, hit the road. I was like, is it hit the deck? No, that's not it. <laughs> Kick rock. It's hit the deck because I'm going to friggin' lob a grenade at you. Oh, okay. A grenade of, get the freak away from me. <laughs> a grenade of me stiff armed out front saying, you can't hug me now. Mm-hmm. But yeah, dead mommies. Uh, Then we get 
Nicolas Cage, a.k.a. Jack, doing private investigator work. Which I think out of all the jobs he's ever had in a... Like, this is the least pretentious and the most believable Mm -hmm. of a human being to have. Yeah, and it's... I don't know. Like, there's so... Like, I don't understand why that's even in the movie. So you you know what job he has. I guess. And you get you do get those funny parts where that older man is or not older, that other man is like she my wife is having a relationship with Mike Tyson. Yeah. And then like a poorly composited, like cut out and xeroxed on of his this man's wife next to a black and white photo with Mike Tyson and clearly another woman just uh, her face pasted on there and he's like oh my god it, no one would have believed you, that you i think you missed the first photo where he's to like i don't know like show nicolas cage how like beautiful his wife is or something or just to like be like hey this is her uh shows her a picture and it's just her like slouched over on the couch eating Doritos. Oh, I did not. What, yeah, when did yeah. I miss that? Was I getting a Mio? It was at the beginning. It must have been the Mio. Yeah. We got to get a sponsorship from Mio. We don't. This Patreon episode is not sponsored by our patrons. It's sponsored by Mio. No, it's not. One squirt and you're feeling great. Mio energy. Just don't drink four in an hour. One squirt in your gurt and you'll go... You're. <laughs> I. Lo- there are. These are the times when I wish this was filmed because you see Nicole panic and kind of. Uh, people say like, "Hey, the best, the best drumming is when you're like, oh my god, I'm about to fuck up." Yeah. That is Nicole's best joking <laughs> is when you see that in her eyes of like, I'm about to fall off the ledge. Yeah. I was like, oh, man, I have to do this Jake and Amir bit. But then I, yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, guys, check out Mio, sponsored by. Oh, my God. Someday. (laughs) I just wrote high-waisted pants because he's wearing a high-waisted pants. A highway pant. Uh, Betsy is a second grade teacher. Then it's like nighttime. Well, I have some notes in between there. Okay, cool. One... Nicholas Cage is trying to like chase after this man who thinks Mike Tyson is spooping his wife. And as he's walking out, like Nicholas Cage power walks towards mm-hmm. him like an old woman in a mall. Yeah. And then you laughed really hard at that. It was funny. I do. I don't. Th- I think I've heard actors say this on podcasts. Like when you are told To do something that is a normal everyday thing, your mind overthinks it. Yeah. And then, so he was probably like, all right, now run. And then he's like, how do I do that? And then just starts power walking. Or maybe they're on like the second floor of a studio and he had to like, he couldn't like stomp and run after him because the people underneath would be like, hey, quit it. We're trying to film. Um, This is 1992. We're trying to film. (laughs) Um, I guess like Power Rangers. I don't know. That's a 93. So it would have been around that time. Yeah. We're trying to. The birth of MC Deep's happening down (laughs) here. Okay. There we go. There we go. (laughs) (laughs) The conception of MC Deep. I Chihuahua. Shout outs to his parents. Uh, MC Deep loves his mom and that's gross. (laughs) (laughs) So and then we see Sarah Jessica Parker is introduced and she's a second grade teacher and she's being talked to by a parent with the son of the the parent right next to her. And the mom's like, oh, yeah, he's che- the father's cheating on me, this and that. And Sarah Jessica Parker's like, oh, my God, well, this is why Billy's been so quiet. It has to be. I knew something was happening at home. But it's like, no, the dude just got a Game Boy. That's why he's been quiet. Mm -hmm. He's too busy playing Primal Rage. You know, thinking about it, the P.I. thing actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because he's like, oh, being a P.I. 
establishes or like re yeah, reinforces like why, my why he's not why he's hesitant to get married but also like just later on when to be like hey he's actually back in new york you see him working and you're like okay yeah he's in new york now yeah whatever well it's also like if you're a flat earther you're probably going to hang out with people who reassure your views in flat earthing so if he's like oh marriage is bad he's going to have a job that shows you that marriage is bad that's probably what the Uh writer was going for because all his clients are like oh man cheating on wife or wife cheating on man so you're saying that his job that he has his job because he believes that yes. or the other way around? Uh, th- he believes that because of his job. No, no, be, uh, the other way around. Because then also he can that tell sense, his then. spouses like, hey, no, I know marriage is bad. I see it all the time. Sure. I'm trying to think of a real world, like another instance that this could analogy be fit into. A wonderful sentence structure, James. But I can't. Cool. I guess like if you if you love eating me and you work at a deli around other people who eat me, I don't know. It, it might only work in this instance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or if you love marriage and you want to show people like, no, marriage does work. You'd hang out at like y- you would be a marriage consultant a wedding planner or like hey i work at an old folks home just seeing people who have been married for years and years sure i don't know please stop me from talking somebody Somebody stop stop me me. i was just about to say it too i had to (laughs) uh wow wow wow. okay then there's like the funny conversation of him having recurring dreams about his mom and she's naked, Gross. vacuuming. Disgusting. <laughs> it's really funny, though. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's a funny thing. I don't know. I'm not, like, super... Yeah, it's like that one review said. Like, it's a very, like, neutral mood. Like, it's fine. It's, like, kind of fun to watch. But I also don't... I don't know. Maybe I'm just not in the mood for it today. That could be. Because I am just in like a bummed out mood today because of everything happening. You hella chuffed. All the time. Yeah. This is how I would explain this movie. There are uh, kinds of films, maybe even music, that when you watch it, it might not be the best. So people know us from Mostly Speak and Sentai. Zhu Ranger, I don't think is the best Sentai series minus like the the Burai arc that's amazing but when you watch it it kind of brings you back to coming home on a a winter's day in Michigan you're flip you flip on Toonami and you can just relax and have a hot chocolate and feel comforted this movie gave me those kinds of feelings as well yeah I guess I, I yeah I get it like there's not too much going on and it's not like an intense like oh my god are they going to not fall in love mm-hmm. you know they are but uh, it's also not like oh my god is he gonna like hold her at knife point the, you, we have these kind of set rules that the guy's not a monster it, talking about james khan uh is that his name it's c-a-a-n no no his first name james i don't fucking know. sure Jim? mr khan <laughs> Is a con man. So like he also he's like misses his wife, but also has a bunch of money and probably always gets his way. But he's not like a a full on monster. And I like that. So you can kind of switch off your brain and just enjoy Vegas in the late in the early 90s Mm -hmm. and Hawaii. This felt like what Adam Sandler eventually became like, hey, when I make a movie It's for me, my friends, and the crew to be able to hang out in a place we've always wanted to go to and have fun after shooting and also during shooting. Mm -hmm. So this, I give two thumbs up to doing that. It was fun. It was relaxing. Yeah. And Sarah Jessica Parker, who? 
not too hard on the eyes. Mm -mm -mm. And Mr. Nicolas Cage. Okay, guys. He's not looking great in this movie, honestly. I know. So like there was one scene where I was like, wow, he looks like shit. <laughs> I think it, like it kind of does fit because he no, he's under stress. The scene that where I thought that. So I would like to to do, try this out, Nicole. And it is Nick Cage chest watch. And that is <laughs> there have been past movies. I think Boy in Blue was the peak. His chest hair was robust. And I, I, I wonder if one, he's is he buzzing it or does he have like a merkin to like fill out and be like, hey, I have a voluptuous chest hair. I'm sorry. What the fuck does that mean? A merkin is like a wig. He does, does he have, not have that. Maybe he puts a little bit of glue on, <laughs> splashes some pubes up top and then says like, hey, I'm looking real nice. Yeah. So... When we see his chest, I will be commenting on it. Is it full? Is it low? Or is it in between? All right, cool. Well, I'll leave that to you. No, Nicole, you also no. have to comment. Did you know he's also an actor who has alopecia? Not Aretta, but he, because of all the like hair and makeup that he has to do, he he has spots where he doesn't have hair. Mm. I have spots where I don't have hair, but that's because I yank it out, baby. Yeah. It's an issue. And sometimes my thumb starts to bleed because I... I mean, are you sure he isn't just ha have male pattern baldness? No, it's, it's he has commented on it and it's not. Because oh. I think it's in, in a way in which like that's male pattern baldness happens in specific areas. Yeah. And this is not. And it was like when he was young. Yeah. As well, so... Yeah, I don't know. You tell me, Nicole. You smell pee, Nicole, when you're doing his litter box. Oh, my God, he's sleeping now. Mm -hmm. That's what he does. When we do podcasts, he comes and we sits on that chair. We to sleep. Oh, my God. Even when we're screaming obscenities at each other. <laughs> I think he's wearing eyeliner in some of these Dude, scenes. Dude, yeah. Okay, all right. I'm glad we're on the same age. Or maybe he, like just has mascara to make his mm. lashes look thicker. I don't know. But yeah, definitely. Because when you're next to Sarah Jessica Parker, you got to put in some effort, Up guys. Ante. Yeah. My dad always, because he was introduced to Sarah Jessica Parker when she was like a teen on a show. And he was a teen, like in his teens as well. I forget the name of the show, but he's always like associated her with that. So he's like, oh, Sarah Jessica Parker. No, thank you. And then also in pop culture, people are always calling her like a horse face. And fuck people. Like, she's radiant. Mm -hmm. Very, very slender. Like, if she was five feet taller and in a three-piece suit, I would hide your children from her. What? Because she's slender, man. Oh, my God. I'm so pissed. <laughs> How did you not know that? <laughs> uh, anytime someone says slender, I immediately uh, say blank white face man trying to lure children <laughs> to kill others. I thought it was like going to be a reference to the Resident Evil giant lady. Oh, no. You're a giant lady. Oh, Step on my testes. That's what people keep saying. Mm -hmm. Arby's did a... a like in Arby saw someone uh, like this was on Arby's is if anyone doesn't know Resident Evil 8, there's a giant vampire lady in it. And people are like, oh, my God, she can step on my chest any day of the week. Someone in Arby sauce did a portrait of her and Arby's posted this like this was something Arby's commissioned and said, like had an asterisk and said, please know. Not drawn to actual scale. There's no uh, curly fries wrapper that would be able to fit this majestic woman. Wow. And it's like, what, <laughs> Arby's? Of course, I'm paraphrasing, but like, yeah, yeah. it was insane. What the fuck? <laughs> Advertising's Every all about the Every time I memes. say what the fuck, I just hear that like beans. What the fuck? Every time now, <laughs> and beans. I hate it. 
Like it all, it makes me laugh, but it's just like, it's involuntary and it's every time. I always hear, I think it's a twisted song or it could be a house of crazy song where, where the, it's just, what the fuck? What, what the fuck? Or I, or I think lock the gates. Cause that's a Mark Marin WTF thing. Sure. For the wolf. Sure. Uh, so then it's raining. I think that's where you left off and nighttime. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because then it, it it's like, oh, years later, their relationship is getting On the shaky. Rocks. Flintstone style. Because she wants to get married. And he's like, meh, 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 meh. I'm scared. And then, and she's like, she's like, but I want a family and stuff. Jack Spermies. In, uh, I don't know, I guess they're religious. I don't, you don't really see that in the movie at all. I, but I never even picked up on that. Well, because why would you have to get married? Because it's the norm. Kids. Yeah. Real one thing, I don't know if you heard it. Oh yeah, you were in the other room. Corey and I were streaming last night together and remotely. And I forget how we got on the the topic of getting your oh seed test uh on final fantasy a you are a seed like that's the like yeah, capital gross. s e e capital d it's the military uh, actually it's the like teen military group that you're a part of and he said oh is that innuendo i was like a seed test no it's not like to find out how much sperm you have and he's like oh man you take the seed test. I was like, well, yeah, technically I did to like after I got my vasectomy. And he said, oh, I need to do one of those. And I was like, what? A, you want to find out how much sperm you have? And he was like, no, I need to get a vasectomy. And I was like, oh, OK, because I because I, then I said, I don't know why you would want to get a sperm test like your sperm count tested. Unless it's for like a toxic masculinity thing of like, oh man, how much sperm do I have? And I said, I said, oh yeah, I have so much sperm. It's it, there's not even any semen in there. When I shoot a load, it moves because it's just wiggling sperm. Uh, it's like crawling. <laughs> yeah, like when like uh, a slug. Uh, no, like a, uh, you know when. I don't know, like... Like a, a millipede? Like, no, like when an egg sac breaks open and, like, it's just a bunch of small little spiders crawling around. <gasps> or, like, if someone throws something up and it's... Like, on the brothers, the sisters' brothers, or the brothers' sisters, it was that movie about the West Wild Western men, and their last name was the sisters. sisters' brothers? Yeah, that. Uh, when he threw up because he had like uh, a spider laid eggs and then it was just like the throw up was wiggling uh, around. That's what the sperm would be. Uh, I mean, semen. It's just like a whole mess of sperm <laughs> held together a mess. <laughs> by a by a, a film of. Why? Always with you. Why? You bring up come to. Oh, my God. I come to with my cum spoon. Um, um, um. fuck. Guys, come in a spoon. Cause then They're going to just... elope in Vegas. <laughs> so you could just like They're tap gonna it down. They're going to elope in Vegas. Hello. And they smooch in the car in the rain. This is what women love spontaneity, even in their... Wedding proposals sure. of like, I guess I'm going to marry you. Mm -hmm. Let's just get married tomorrow. Also, they love begrudging spontaneity. Whatever that means. But he's like begrudging. He's like, let's just get married. He begrudgingly yeah. kind of did it. Yeah. Or it may, he's like, I love you so much. I want to keep this going. So yeah. that's also. No, yeah. He's like, I'll do whatever it takes. Nicole, if you ever want to. Someday marry me. Just let me know. But guess what? Will do. You don't need to. All right. I'm going to love you no matter what. Are you sure? Yeah. Unless you murder someone. You. My bride to you, never yeah, be. You do that a lot. Yeah. Because it's funny. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, I just don't think you get it. It's for like people who watch Frasier. <laughs> Okay. Because that's smart comedy. Uh-huh. He's like 
a radio sh- show host, so it's not like your normal sitcom. Okay. Frager. Sure. He's pretty cool. He likes tossed salad and scrambled eggs. Okay. I like my salad tossed. Okay. <laughs> and I like. Yep. What are you gonna say? <laughs> what do you got brewing in there? Well, I brew some uh, scrambled eggs in my butt. Yeah. Yep. I put a there we go. egg in there and I shake my. Yep. I twerk and I go. <laughs> and it, you know, those things <laughs> that you stab the egg and it like goes and it scrambles the egg inside the egg. Well, I'm just like. I like my eggs shaken, not stirred. So I shake my rumpus. I lay the egg and it cracks open and it's scrambled. This is my podcast. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. Uh, it's Mio's podcast now. Proud podcast partnership. Grab people by the Peters. <laughs> <laughs> but not sexually as a power move. Powerfully grab people's Peters. Wait, what's a P word for grab? I wonder if like Pull. a woman did that. Would they just be turned on? I feel no. like then you would still get the same result though. Like they would still do it. Yeah, I no, I I think it wouldn't because then it's like, oh, this isn't the kind of uh, touch I want down Unless there. Unless you like being dommed. Maybe. Sh- just finger the pee hole. Oh my God. <laughs> Powerfully pull people's peters. There we go. It's like a little kid with their uh, their wagon they always bring around. You're just yanking what? on it. <laughs> like people like have a wet, you, you know, like they're pulling their wagon around. Not like an ass wagon. <laughs> like a real wagon. Like a red wagon. Like, you know, you hop in the wet, like you put your toys yes, and stuff. Yes, I know what a wagon is. Wagon, wagon, dead bodies dragging. So, like, why a, are you using a child in this example? <laughs> so, you know how, like, a kid always like drags a wagon around and it's like, this is what I got my wagon for. It's like you drag someone around by their Peter. I am gonna ban you from this podcast. See you guys later. But then, like, no one would listen. <laughs> yeah, they would. People love they'd the token like, reading corner. They'd be like, fuck this shit. You should do a one man podcast, dude. Absolutely it's liberating not. and terrifying and makes me nervous. I only hear about how you hate it. <laughs> I, I, it's because you only have yourself to depend on. And I didn't want it to be what people would expect it to be, which is just me flailing around for an hour. Yeah. And people just get that on Twitch. So. I don't need a podcast version of it, too. Speaking of Twitch, if you want a Twitch, Mio Energy. What? I'm twitching like I'm... Um, What's his name? Tommy grabs a hotel manager by the balls because he wants a specific hotel room and he gets it. Because he, d- Tommy gets what he wants. Yeah, because he's a straight white man. So Hell yeah. And rich. Yeah. I mean, that's just, yeah. So he is reminiscing about his wife and is like, oh, I haven't been back here since my wife passed away. And he's reminiscing about her, about how she would always be out in the sun. And she, he says, the doctors had never seen anything like it. Skin like a saddlebag. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, that's disgusting. I know some people who in high school were like that. Like, no, I just mean like it's fine, but I just mean like that, like describing someone's skin that way and meaning it as a compliment. I th- I think is the like, doctors didn't mean I'm it like, like why? that. No, he says... Skin like a... He says I that he loved it because it was like a saddlebag. Oh, yeah, which is, say, like an avocado or a kiwi because, you know, it's got a little bit of hair, uh-huh. nice and soft, but... That has nothing to do with... Okay. The, the color, like the Avocados outside. Avocados are bumpy. Oh, wait, no, yeah, not avocado. Uh, well, maybe she shaved that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, when you shave, you get little, like, stubble, like like little red bumps sometimes, especially on your pubis mound. I hate that. What? The word pubis mound? Or- yeah. Okay. That's the technical term. I'm sorry. 
You should be. Um, yeah, skin like a saddlebag. And then uh, it cuts to Jack and Betsy in the hotel lobby kissing. And Jack goes, yoo can I get a room? That's my quote of the movie. I got a couple quotes. Wow, okay. So, yeah, and we laughed and it was good. Yeah, he... Uh... There's a bit of Nick Cage peeking through, but he's just, like, a good actor in here. It's a little distracting. What, of how good he is? No, him yelling a lot. Oh, I I never got any of that. I did. Okay. What's your next note? Oh, gross. God, why did I write that down? They get a room, and it's, like, really fucking nice. And the next morning they wake up and they're talking about, like, the mirror on the ceiling. They were? Yeah, like, they joke about, what's his name, Jack? Says, like, I never knew I had such a nice... Round butt. Yeah. (laughs) And then I wrote, uh, my parents had a ceiling mirror. Ew! (laughs) Where? It's so gross. Did like they inst- above their bed. Did like they it install was, it? Like there were like poles, part of the what's that called? The, the bed frame yeah. and like a like wooden poles that go up and then like a whole thing. It was like a whole deal and there was a mirror up there. Gross. Yeah. And they bought this like that? I don't know. It was like when I was super little. Yeah, that's gross. It was a water bed too. Gross. Yeah. So that is disturbing. A mirror is like for intimacy is nice because then you can always see the person from different angles. That is gross. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't like it. I would love to have sex in a hall of mirrors. That would be scary. No, it wouldn't. Yeah. Because then I could see you where I could see all of you. That would be scary. In a ball of mirrors. It's like a spherical dome Whoa. area that is just a huge mirror. That'd be bright. Like we're inside a disco ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we, we, we light it with warm tones or just like a black light. Then we have a... Uh-huh. Then we, we, no matter where I am in the room, I can see my Grateful Dead poster. Yeah. And my Led Zeppelin three cover. Yeah. That I turned into a black light poster. Yeah. Poorly, I might add. I'm not good at art. (laughs) God, I remember the one Halloween party that we had when Ashley was a senior. She, like, decorated part of the barn by using, like, fabric puff paint on, like, a sheet or something. And drew like mushrooms and put up like black lights. And I'm like, like she as a teen like thought she was so like, like my mom didn't know. And it's like, dude, you are so fucking obvious. Like you have so much Bob Marley shit. It's ridiculous. (laughs) It's just like, it's so funny. Also, teens, if you're out there listening, thank you. If... You are like, hey, man, I just got high. I'm going to blitz myself with Axe body spray. They'll never know. You can't smell yourself because you have just inhaled smoke in your nose hole. So you're like, hey, I don't smell like it. You absolutely smell like weed. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Unless you take a shower and clean your nails like you specifically clean out your nails and do some mouthwash. You will reek. Yeah. Or, you know, you p- take a toilet pole, toilet pole, a toilet bowl, uh, toilet paper roll. That's what, what a roll. And then you stuff dryer sheets in it and exhale out of that. It will help a lot. Mm-hmm. Open up the window, exhale through those dryer sheets out the window even better. Yeah. Mm, even better. <laughs> And then even if you smoke cigarettes, you got to shower and you got to clean out your nails. I'm sorry, teens. Yeah. If you want to be edgy and you want to be cool, you got to put in the work. Because you want to know what the least cool thing is? Your parents grounding you. You want to know who gets grounded? Little babies. So if you want to be a big man and a big woman, 
W-O-M-Y-N, you're going to have to shower. You're going to have to do the things you need to do and don't use too much body spray. They'll know that immediately. Mm -hmm. Use your normal amount because then they'll... Which is probably already too much. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or what you'll have to do, unfortunately, is always use a lot. (laughs) Yeah. So then it's they're none the wiser. This is just an everyday occurrence. Yeah. Sorry, kids. Dip your hands, like open up a can of Axe Body Spray. I mean, or just like don't get high. Yeah, I guess if you want to be a narc. (laughs) It like it hurts your brain when you develop. (laughs) You want to know who doesn't? You're like twenty or something, or what did it say? Yeah, most millionaires until you're like done growing, you shouldn't. Don't have good brains because most millionaires are from the NFL. Okay, so so you're saying. If you want to be a millionaire, maybe you got to okay, get but your they, head not good. But their brain got not good, like, afterwards. Like, after they became, slash, like, during. Well, yeah. if I, Not first. They didn't get de- dumb and then get rich. No. Little League traumatizes your brain. Like, from, like, peewee Little League football if you are a child and it's like full contact football in elementary school, your brain will develop less. Like there has been studies on this, mm-hmm. which, man, I got hit in the head so many times. It's something I, I should get checked to make sure my I, no, I haven't checked, which is why there's that stereotype that jocks are dumb. Yeah. Oh, my God. Like. Parents were perpetuate like per- parents made that stereotype happen because they're like, my kid just needs to be in Little League. Yeah. So I can live my glory days through him or her. Yeah. You can be a female kicker. Yeah. Unfortunately. What do you mean, unfortunately? Well, be- because the uh, one that's really all like if you're a female on a football team, the- it's generally you're designated to be kicker. Mm. And unfortunately, because like, no, guys, don't go in football. You don't have CTE as a child. Yeah. We, we like to call that um, not premature CTE. I was trying to think of like CTE junior. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back to notes, baby. Oh, no. So now Jack got invited to this poker game mm-hmm. and he's like, oh, well, I'll do this, and then we will get married. He's trying to, like, lengthen the time he's a bachelor, it feels like. That's what she thinks, at least. Yeah, but also, like, we see that he does gamble, mm-hmm. like, even before they go to Vegas. So it does make sense. Yeah, and he does seem to be a good poker player, and he says he plays it a lot and he's mm-hmm. good at it. It's just obviously this was fixed. Yeah. No, it definitely was. Because Tom, no, Tommy? Is that the rich man? Mm-hmm. Tommy wants to date this woman and is like, oh, the best way to do that is fix this. He gets in debt by 65000 because he has a, a, a flush. And he's like, oh, I will win, but then... Dude over here has an even better flush, which is just mathematically impossible. And he's like, well, you owe us 65 grand. Uh, And he's like, well, I guess you could pay for it if I get your girlfriend for the weekend. Yeah. I think I had a a note about that. Um, During this poker game, though, there were two people just eating turkey sandwiches Mm -hmm. throughout the entire thing. Which you thought was really funny. Yeah, because it was just like. There was a turkey sandwich there, just there, and it was constantly just there. And then the guy finally picks it up and just lazily eats it. I I thought it was funny. During like a really serious conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Nicole, how much money would you need to spend a weekend with a rando man? Uh, Yeah. I mean, what do you like? Would I do the same thing that she did? I guess, but... Yeah, I may. I we would never be in this situation because I don't gamble. I guess like if I got a, a medical stuff happen and the hospital head of says, "Oh, 
your petite thumbelina of a girlfriend, <laughs> a bride to never be, I heard. Oh my uh, God. <laughs> uh, your bill will be wiped away if I can spend the weekend with her. It depends on a lot of things. It's to save my life. But then if it's to save my life, it wouldn't be being dealt with. You would be making the deal. I would be unconscious with a heart monitor going beep, beep, beep. Well, then, yeah. How much? I guess it would be astronomical because. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Never mind. Nicole would do it for like 150 grand. If I was in the same situation, I I would probably do it. But I would not go to Hawaii. I would oh, be like, yeah. no, we're staying in Vegas. The like, only that's the only issue I have with this, like realistically, is like her going to Hawaii with this fucking stranger is insane to me. The only thing that the only way I would have allowed that, like let's say you got in gambling debt because that's more realistic. And I'm kidding, it's not. <laughs> oh, Nicole just rolled her eye off to the side. Um, what I it like. If a woman was like, oh, that boy reminds me of my late husband, I would say like, oh, we're not going to Hawaii unless Nicole goes as well as a chaperone. Mm -hmm. And I get we I, I can hire a bodyguard. Yeah. But then I'd be afraid like the bodyguard would just get in the pockets. I'd have to like hire TC <laughs> to protect me with his big old muscles. Yeah. Because T I would hope our friendship would outrule, even though like TC always is saying like I'm in <laughs> really needs money, would still be on my side. Yeah. Oh no, would totally be on your side. That's the yes, because then it's it's no longer about me; it's about you uh -huh. and everyone on Marshland Media. Nicole trumps James. Yeah. They'll run to your assistance. Me. Go spend like an hour and a half a week with me. <laughs> uh. Speaking of, they, they're on their first date, getting to know each other at this Elvis impersonator yeah. show. And there is a cigarette woman, like someone who sells cigarettes. But as she's like walking around, I think she's selling cigarettes. She can't be selling the thing she's displaying because why? She's walking around with like a light up yo-yo, just like yo-yoing. Mm-hmm. And it's great. I love yo-yo representation in movies. You don't even see the yo-yo. You see it a you little bit. You just see her hand. Yes. No, you see it drop down out of frame. and You're way too excited about it. Oh, hey. I more enjoyed the kid that was Elvis. It was really cute. Yeah. I get Elvis now. Like Elvis, is, Elvis sounds good. I'm more of a Roy Orbison fan. The way fan. you said that made it sound like it was like a meal. Huh? <laughs> like Elvis sounds good right now. <laughs> <laughs> also, people who are like, oh, uh, dancing these days or people, people love to shit on flossing. Oh, it's just that Fortnite dance. Screw off. Because <laughs> Elvis totally would have been flossing. He loved moving his hips and uh -huh. every time an Elvis song would come on, it'd be like a four bar intro and then like it'd break down and then he'd start singing. I'd jump up and start flossing. And one time I successfully flossed to the other side. Yeah. It was slightly annoying, but slightly cute. Thank you. That's my bag. Uh, the other day I listened to, I was listening to Paramore. I forgot how good Paramore is. She's like, I have red hair. Yeah. And I'm sad, but I'm happy. Did I ever tell that story on the podcast about uh, there was a secret Santa thing? And on my list, I just wrote Paramore CD because I didn't have any. And I was, wasn't thinking because I was like a kid. Because I'm just like, get me literally any Paramore CD. I don't care. And what they got me was, like, the live version oh, yeah. of an album. So, like, that's the only one that I <laughs> would listen to. My dad once got uh, me, which it feels like an oxymoron, especially at the, the time period he got me this. But, hey, he loves rap music. My dad also loved to give, like, joke gifts that were tangential to what we enjoyed 
So he got me Vanilla Ice's Greatest Hits. Mm -hmm. And it's like there's one, maybe two, but it was a full CD. So it's like, hey, guys, let's just... A co- let's just call it a Vanilla Ice collection. No, no, no. Let's call it a Greatest Hits. It'll sell better that mm-hmm. way. But I hear a lot of people are like, give me the, give me a CD by this person. And they end up with the live version. Or sometimes it'll be like a cover, ver- like a Christian cover version. <laughs> Meaning like a, all ages. Like this is appropriate for children yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Parents, they just don't understand. <laughs> Uh, Lori would, my stepmother, would just be like, no, write down, just send me links to things yeah. when we started being a family. And she would get me like Gigi Allen, mm-hmm. Sid Voorhees, straight up fucking offensive bitch. That's a album title. She purchased that for me for like, hey, guys, it's the holiest of all Christian holidays <laughs> to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Open it up. Oh, hell yes. G.G. Allen's on the cover pissing himself. (laughs) And it's like. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, hell yeah. It's ICP Uh... and they're clowns and there's like, it's a comic book cover and there's like a head in their hand. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. You, you sort of. It seemed like you were complaining about your dad getting joke j- gifts. And I'm like, hey, at least your dad put time and thought into his oh, yeah, gifts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because mine just went to the closest grocery store and grabbed whatever DVD was, oh my God. was for kids at the time. Yeah, my... <laughs> like over the hedge. Oh, I'm so sorry, Nicole. <laughs> At least he, like, put in the effort. No, that wasn't any effort, guys. My dad also, I've said it before, he loved just pulling out bargain bin stuff to, like, sprinkle in the gifts. And most of the time, it always hit. There was this one game that all it was was kind of, you know, the it's on Mario Party 8 where the aliens are coming after you in the UFO spaceships and you're, you're on, like, you you just go left to right and you shoot them. That's all the game mm-hmm. was, but it was like military. You had like a machine gun and you could get different weapons throughout. Mm-hmm. So fun. It was a computer game. That was one Monster Rancher Hop About was another one. And I swear by that game on most days. And then other days I swear that game is the worst piece of trash. <laughs> the difficulty level on some of those. It's just guys. It's a hard game sometimes. The only one that wasn't good was the Catwoman game for Game Boy Advance. That was two thumbs Mm. down. Over the Hedge is actually not as bad as it sounds, though. (laughs) Like, I remember it being a good movie, but I was also, like, 12, so... I don't know if that movie would hold up. Let's do it for a watch along. Dude, yes. Yeah, let's do it. No, let's do the Disney. Avril Lavigne is a possum in it. Whoa, what? Yeah. I think that, that what's that Disney, The or maybe it was Disney ripping off Madagascar at the time. I forget the name of the movie, but it's on my list of things to watch well high. Mm-hmm. But yeah, let's, well, let's do Over the Garden Wall or Over the Hedge. <laughs> yeah. Let's also do Over the Garden Wall. Oh, my God. Uh, what are we talking about? Wow, wow, wow. Okay. They, they're in Hawaii, and I wrote down, it's not a quote from the movie, but this, he is bringing- Wait, wait, wait. What's up? It's weird that when they were debating on whether or not to go along with this, they were, like, at a boxing match. I think they went there because they could yell there. Okay, sure. But boxing is a, it was big in Las Vegas at the time and still like is the premier place to do boxing. Yeah, but I wouldn't be like, let's go here to talk about this. Well, then they go to an arcade and they're screaming uh, outdated terms for sex workers. And yeah, uh, teens are looking at them like, oh, yeah, like <laughs> they said, fuck. 
but they didn't say fuck. You made me a sex worker in different terms. And then mm-hmm. a, a teen boy looks at another teen boy and is like, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Let's use our quarters with her instead of this uh, virtual racer. Yes, Hawaii. So this, Sarica, Sarica Jessica Parker. Mm-hmm. Sar- Sarica. SJP is SJW. Uh, <laughs> Sarah Jessica Walker is a woman who looks exactly like this man's ex-wife passed away. And he's like, oh, my son will be there. My daughter-in-law, their child. That Just think of that situation in real life. This is what the kids would be like. Dad brought home a woman that looks just like mom. Cool. <laughs> like that wouldn't happen. They'd be like, Dad is. If his sons, he, his sons are the Deedles. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. What if we found out J- James Con <laughs> played Elliot? Uh, uh, wait, Elton John Deedle? No, it's not Elton John. Elton Deedle. Yeah, it's Deedle just farm. Yes. Uh, <laughs> a child would say, like, "Wow, Dad is." going through something they would set this man aside and say like hey dad you're 51 years yeah, old yeah it's his adult son you keep saying child yes yes uh adult son who ha- well i said like daughter-in-law and their child so i uh, but uh, yeah the, the child uh, sure you know, once a child always a child in a mother's eye mom stop calling me your baby yeah it would be a cry for help they are probably it's this man is a lawyer, so he is either 26 to 28 if he had just gotten done with law school. Mm-hmm. He is a practicing lawyer. So same exact age as SJP. Mm-hmm. No one would be like, yeah, dad. Maybe he dates a lot of 27-year-olds. Okay, who knows? Who knows? Would you, because you're almost 27, would you date a 51-year-old? No. Okay. What if he's got money? Ooh, yes. Oh, yeah. (laughs) What if it's some, like, fancy artist that you've always looked up to? I don't look up to fancy artists. Uh, I guess, okay, what if it's the men who created Image Comics who love their artwork? Do I? Yeah, they're so accurate. They're accurate portrayals of the human physique. Okay. And you p- applaud them for that. Sure. They're like, yes, that's how you draw women's breasts. I don't think I've ever said that. <laughs> no, you <ever>. haven't. <laughs> to yeah. very few comic book artists. It was literally one time that I said that. Yeah. And it ended up not being a man who was the illustrator. Well, yeah, it was his wife. So. Yeah. Hey, that could be us one day. I write the comics, you draw them. Mm-hmm. I think what Crumbums really needs is like one of the characters needs to be real sexy when you draw them. Yeah. So Frank obviously needs nipple tassels. Mm-hmm. And he's thwinging them around. Wow, wow, wow. He's saying, hey, guys, look at it. <laughs> to hug him once more, tassels and all. She goes to Hawaii, so uh, Jack just goes back home. And goes to work again, I guess. Yeah. And he sees her on TV with Tommy uh, at a volcano. And And he gets super pissed. Because he has kind of his arm around her. Yeah. Put your arm around me, baby. Well, and the client that he sees is like describing uh, like. Infidelity. Basically. And then he's like, stop saying that. Trying to give me a heart attack. Yeah. I did put down, she also gets to go to Hawaii for free. So, like, the experience of this would be a great story. But it, it is it is a strange man with no, like, there's no legal binding contracts. That's what, that's what they should have done is like, hey, here are contracts. It is from this day to this day. So there's no, nothing being thrown out of left field. Mm-hmm. But this man clearly isn't litigious. And Vegas is, I wrote down Vegas is greater than Hawaii. Vegas is colorful. There's the lights, the sound, cigarette smoke. Yeah. Dan from Power Playthrough. Sure. <laughs> Someday he'll That's hear this. That's why everyone goes there. Yeah. I say we, 
the biggest slow poke collection in all the world is in this man's room. <laughs> Hell yeah. I One of my favorite lines was, well, Tommy is telling SJP, like, hey, you... This man doesn't want to marry you. He's stringing you along. I know men like him. They're great men. But when it comes to romance, they'll break your heart. She said he had a very strange mother. <laughs> and I I loved that line. Um, what is what slash how is Ben Stein's acting career? Because he's he, he wrote speeches for Nixon and Reagan, I believe. It's just weird that he then is comedic character actor who's ben stein he was the guy trying to get a ticket to to his nephew's birthday party in minnesota yeah the guy that was like holding up the line yeah uh i wrote down because nicholas cage gets like super pissed and yells at him and then like the whole line claps and i wrote down every karen's dream <laughs> <laughs> Then we get, I think, the, your problematic scene of dad from Everyone Loves Raymond. Yeah, Peter Boyle. Yeah. Is Chief Orman. And is either, I think, is being like an ad- indigenous Hawaiian or Native American. I, I have no idea. I cannot tell. Yeah. He doesn't it, even keep the, like, shitty accent for the whole time. Yeah. He's obviously... For sure is someone who is a stoner. <laughs> oh, yeah, because, oh, no, he has, I was going to say he has a Grateful Dead, but he has a lay miss. He loves theater. I it's don't know. It's all confusing. I, no, I think he, yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know what that character was. Uh, he also then asks, do you find me attractive to Nick Cage? And he, Nick Cage goes, you're a striking figure by attractive, if that's what you mean. And... <laughs> That was one of my favorite lines. Um, yeah, and they go to his house because the taxi driver is trying to delay Nicolas Cage from getting to Tommy's house. Yeah, and then I'm. They end up saying like, Sarah Jessica Parker says, "I'll marry you" because Tommy makes up lies saying that it was only for three thousand dollars, and he put up her as a like into the pile of money opposed to him losing all the money then tommy suggesting it so she's like yeah i'll marry you and she's like eventually they go back to las vegas she's like no i i actually i'm i'm having second guesses and he's like you made a promise and no one breaks a promise to tommy the gambler um yeah you skipped ahead a lot yeah i'm i'm i don't i didn't have any real notes of importance during that stuff um well when they're at chief orman's place uh jack just steals the taxi because he gets so pissed then tommy gives betsy a really nice ring asking her to marry him and then yeah lies to her about Jack betting her in a game and that he only owed three grand instead of 65. Then Jack actually sees her. He shows up and sees her, but Tommy sees him first and they're like wrestling and Jack gets taken to jail and she never even knew he was there. Heard him on the wind though. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, they all, so then they all just head to Vegas. Tommy and Betsy are there to get married. And then Jack is obviously going there to stop it. And he has to, he can't find a direct flight to Vegas in time. So he goes to San Antonio, but he can't get something because uh, Tommy has people, uh, connections in San Antonio mm-hmm. and gets the flight canceled. So he's looking at private airplanes saying like, is anyone going to Vegas? And he finds a troop of Vegas or not Vegas impersonators, <laughs> Elvis impersonators going to Las Vegas. Yes. But what Nicholas Cage doesn't know is they are the flying Elvises, the Utah chapter. And what they're going to be doing is, Jumping out and skydiving, sky baby, uh, into Las Vegas while wearing like light up Elvis suits. 
And is it fine if we just flash forward to that point? Because no. this is okay. Well, because then it's like he's on this plane, and while Betsy and Tommy, she's having second thoughts about getting married, and he like tries to bribe her. Like, oh yeah, he was like, "Hey, I'll give you half a mil if you just marry me right now." And she was like, "No, I really don't want to do that." And then he is like, "I'll give you one mil," and then just gets like really fucking aggressive and scary and then uh she says she has to use the bathroom and escapes and then disguises herself as a showgirl and that's how she kind of gets away and like uh just blends in with the crowd that's all gathered around to see the elvises and before when she's like oh i need to use the bathroom or or i'm gonna brown my white dress yeah, she definitely says that. It was funny. It's a comedy, ro- yeah. romantic even. If someone poops their white dress, that's pretty romantic. Uh, bridesmaids. Yeah. But bridesmaids, well, that was just comedy, not romance. If you were wearing a like skin tight FMD white style and you pooped yourself, I'd be like, oh, it's on. <laughs> <laughs> so... They they start jumping out of the airplane and there is an announcer on the ground saying like, oh, it's the flying Elvises. It's great. Come and watch, guys. Everyone's outside of the Belize Hotel, whatever it is. And the announcer says, never before have so many Elvises been airborne. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's my favorite line from this. Nice. I like that. Yoo-hoo, can we get a room? This is this this was a great movie. I'm butchering that line. Um, and that's they end up falling in love again and getting married. Fade to black. Yeah, in those same outfits. Sure. With Elvis is in the crowd. Yeah. As, as the, their as their witnesses mm-hmm. or whatever. And it's really cute. Do we rank the movie or do we do I, we do whatever the fuck we want. Oh. Uh, I just want to say that I, and especially after talking about it, I do, I really like this movie. Like I could definitely see me like watching this with my grandma. I think she would love this movie, honestly. I think this is the most rewatchable movie that we've seen, but I don't think it's the best movie we've seen. Yeah. But I don't know. This would I think this might be the one that I would recommend to like most people opposed to, you know, like if you like David Lynch or you like weird shit, I would say like Vampire's Kiss or Wild Fire, Wild at Heart. But yeah, I, I th- like to the general audience, this one I would recommend the most. Yeah. Do should we? No, we don't usually rank it. We just do the, the the segment. Which segment? The is he a madman or better than John Ham? I'm getting that super eight feeling. Is it madness or is he a genius? That's good. Let's go, let's go with the keep that going. Oh my god, guys, did you hear that? That wasn't Britney Spears. That wasn't Celine Dion. That was our queen. My bride to never be. Nicole Jake is singing. It's oh it's yeah, it's obviously not those. Well, no, uh, it, it's new. Yeah. This is the first episode where we put in yes. the, the new theme yeah. song, the actual, like the produced theme song. My singing is fine. I, oh, more like it's passable. If the Mona Lisa is passable, then yeah, it's passable. 
if a donut in the microwave is passable, Dude, then yeah. Dude, I want one. Okay, go to the store. No, I do need to go to the store, though. Shit. He's he's a great actor. I'd say he's more John Hamm than Madman in this. Really? Because I think he's more Madman. What? Oh, my God. It's the first time, I guess, he, where we've... Opposites attract. We yank on like we're rolling out Laffy Taffy, pulling it, and then but we slide together because it wasn't Laffy Taffy. It was a freaking rubber band. Just because like when tensions are high and he's you know like worried and stressed, then he's just like eighty percent yelling or just doing the thing where that he does where he like starts a sentence talking and then ends it with yell like the last word he just yells i it feels a little like jim carrey-esque of like sarcasm where it's like oh right really? sure. uh, you know that's spot on jim wouldn't you say like you're saying he's doing it for comedy purposes yeah of being like sarcastic you're saying he's being sarcastic yeah, when like he's talking to the wife or the son and daughter in law, and he's like, I'm just so happy for them. Yes, that's sarcasm. Yeah, I mean, like in those, in these instances, I feel he like. He also it's, wasn't yelling when he said that. Uh, she gets yelly. Uh, no, uh, he's he speaking doesn't. at a louder, louder register. Okay, James. The loudest register is the one where people buy the booze at. Uh huh. Because they're like, just give me the, give me my juice. And they're like, Agree to disagree. This isn't juice. This is, this is, um, alcohol. They're like, yeah, that is my juice. A hundred percent. Makes my lips smucker like Welch's. What's up? Where are we ranking it? This is hard. What are our top three? Top three, starting from number one, is Raising Arizona. Peggy Sue got married and Valley Girl. I'm going to be honest. It's better than all three of those. Are you fucking serious? Yeah, what do you think? No. Better than not any of those? Correct. Wow. Okay, then tell me where you want it in this list. I don't know, because then there's Boy in Blue. Uh, It's better than Boy in Blue, absolutely. No. What? Okay, what's below that? Moonstruck. I th- now think Moonstruck needs to be higher because I, I, where do you want it? And then there's Wild at Heart. Oh, it's ab- it has to be better than Wild at Heart. Yeah. And I feel like it's, b- I think this. Mo- I th- See, I think it's a tie between Moonstruck. Then put it above Moonstruck. Because it's also like a rom-com. I think it's much better than Moonstruck. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not in top three, but it's number four. No, it'd be number five. Oh, oh, be, boy in blue. You really, you liked that more than this? Yeah. Yeah, that's just because there's a dog accurately named Robo. <laughs> you look at that dog and you say, yeah, obviously it's a Robo. Just like when I look at my younger brother, I say, yeah, that's a Robo. And then number five, because I think it could easily beat out. That I think it could easily beat out Valley Girl. Peggy Sue, maybe. That's where it gets iffy, but I think easily Valley Girl gets usurped. I know. I'm scared because I feel like at some point we're going to have to like rewatch some of these. No, no. I have enough memory. <laughs> Let's make a memory. And my computer's frozen. So. Write it down in a note, baby. Yeah, it would be. Maybe I just need to like refresh it. Where is this going, Nicole? It's fine. Leave the laptop. Look into the microphone. No. Pay attention to me. This episode is going long. I need to edit it tonight. Okay. So it's number five below Boy in Blue, but above Moonstruck. All right. I'm fine with that. Okay. Cool. Uh, Would you watch this again? I think we both agreed yes. Yeah. I think this is his most rational performance and mo- most cohesive coherent performance and uh, i give it two thumbs up i would possibly put this as at number two so that's how you you guys know where i'm coming from wow hey you little sleepy boy socks just woke up but he's looking tired Baby, what's up man the next movie 
The next guru V is Amos and Andrew. Hell yeah. Which I've never heard of. That is, I believe, a buddy cop movie. Because okay. I think last week I said it was a like a dog movie, <laughs> but no, it's a buddy cop movie. I wish it was a dog movie. Where uh, Nick Cage is talking a dog. Mm. A, do- a, to- a docking dog. A docking tog. Mm-hmm. All right, that's it. That's all I got today. Cool. So, uh, yeah, it was fun. It was a fun, good movie. Let us know what you guys think about this show, about this movie, about where you want us to go. It's the rest of the Nick Cage movies. You can tell us to do other ones. However, just so you know, we will accept the feedback, but we will keep doing Nick Cage movies. Yeah. All right. I've been Jane. I'm Nicole. And uh, we've been engaged, engaged with, with Nicholas Cage. Because you know he's not married to that script. script. Ooh, our, our, even our T's were on time, I think. All right, guys. See you. Bye. Bye.